Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for taking the time to tune in and watch this video. Um, my name is Zara Naderi, and I'm an FG doctor at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Kings Lynn. And I'm really excited to be here today as I'm joined by clinical psychologist, Dr. Louise Robinson. So welcome. Um, to discuss the importance of mental health awareness with a particular focus on mental health at the workplace. And considering the current climate and the unprecedented circumstances that we're actually faced with today with a global pandemic, um, I really wanted to start an initiative to highlight the importance of raising awareness and why especially now we shouldn't neglect our psychological well-being. So Dr Robinson, thank you so much for being here today. Thank so you. So I'll pass to you. And from a clinical psychologist's point of view, what do you think we need to be more mindful of during these very new and quite difficult times? Yes, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I was so pleased when you contacted our department and said that you wanted to put this video together. So I'm really pleased to be with you today. Thank you. Um, Mental health in the workplace is such an important issue, arguably, you know, never more so than in the, the, the face of the current pandemic. Um, NHS staff are being asked to work very differently to, to move wards, to take on new responsibilities, to, to work with technology like you and I are doing today um, in, in a very different way. So I think probably it's fair to say that um, COVID-19 has changed everybody's lives in, in, in some way. Um, I think what we need to be mindful of, particularly right now, is that we're all going to have a, a different approach to these changes. Um, that is perfectly normal to have a, a range of thoughts and feelings associated with the challenging circumstances that we find ourselves in. Um, I've spoken with staff members on our on our dedicated um, staff helpline who are in a range of different difficult circumstances right now. So. I've talked to staff members who are currently at work and trying to manage really high levels of anxiety. Um, I've talked to staff who are worried about contracting the virus, passing it on to family members, to other patients. I've talked to staff who are being troubled by the amount of deaths that they've witnessed, mm -hmm. um, with staff who, for a range of different reasons, are not able to be at work, or at least not work in the way that they would ordinarily. Um, and they're struggling with feelings of guilt, frustration, worries about what their colleagues might be thinking of them, that they're not there with them, and, and a huge range of other thoughts and feelings in between. And I suppose what I wanted to say was that all of those thoughts and feelings are valid. Um, they're only to be expected. They're perfectly normal. They're a normal reaction to a very abnormal set of circumstances. Okay. So, so I think to keep in mind, particularly right now, that, that we're all going to come in and out of a range of difficult thoughts and feelings. There might be times when we feel like we're coping fairly well and, and you know, we're managing and we're getting on with the tasks. Um, and there might be times when we struggle and that's OK. Yeah, and I think thank you for that. And I think you've touched on some really important points. And sp speaking to my colleagues and NHS staff, I think the the factors that you've spoken about, about anxiety, dealing with the high stress levels, um, being present when there's deaths that you have very little control over. And I think over time, in addition to the lockdown and the social isolation mm -hmm. with family members and friends, this can build up. And I think you've touched on some really important, important points. And I know whoever's watching this video can relate to that, particularly if they are working for the NHS and they're at the front line. And um, even on the periphery, I think this is these these factors are quite evident so I think that's really that's really important that we've sort of brought that to light and we've and we've spoken about that mm -hmm. and with regard to any coping strategies what what would you recommend for our staff well uh, I suppose um with mental health awareness week having having just been recently it had the theme of kindness mm -hmm. um and I think again never has it been more important for us to hold that value of kindness absolutely crucial during this time both in terms of demonstrating kindness to our colleagues to the people that we're we're working with around us but also in terms of showing kindness to ourselves mm -hmm. um, and i suppose what i mean by that is uh, at times of high stress when we're very pressured when the work environment is very busy it can be easy to forget the basic things so mm -hmm. things like 
you know, making sure that you've had something proper to eat, make sure that you're staying hydrated, make sure that you take your breaks. Um, it can help to gently remind our colleagues kindly <laughs> to, to do those things as well. Um, if you're working at home, for example, that's a different set of circumstances and a different kind of challenge and pressure. Um, things like designating yourself a, a place to work that's as free from distractions as it can be. Um, set yourself a daily routine, make sure that you come away from the emails, come away from the work at a reasonable time um, so that there is that, you know, distinction between work time and home time. And I think whether you're working at home or, or at the hospital or whether you're currently not able to work for, for a, a, a variety of reasons, I think what's really important is that you have some time away from all things COVID-19 related. Mm -hmm. So making some time for activities that are valuable to you, that are important to you, whether that's stuff like reading a book, listening to music, um, it might be craft activities, it might be exercising, making time for those things that are away from all of the the news and the radio and, and, and all of the things that are going on. One of the things that I'm hearing from staff particularly at the moment that I just wanted to touch on if that's okay, yeah. um, a lot of staff are saying to me that they're having difficulty getting good quality sleep at the moment um, and I don't know if that's something that you're coming across with with your colleagues maybe yeah. yourself as well. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to touch on it a little bit in this video because like I say it's a theme that keeps coming up um, and I suppose in terms of just a little bit of advice around that kind of thing, um, what I'm hearing is that um, a lot of staff are, are worrying when they finish their shift and they go home about the patients that they've left on the wards and whether their condition's going to worsen, whether they even might be alive when they next come onto the ward. Um, I'm also hearing that that there are challenges in terms of preparing for the for the day ahead and, and worrying what challenges might you know present themselves during the working day. And all of those things can have an impact on getting a good restful um, night's sleep. So I suppose a couple of things really is, um, you know, to remember that that's all normal. That's the first thing. Um, and, you know, again, it's it's what what our brains are doing is attempting to prepare us for the worst case scenario, which although that might be understandable, perhaps it's not the most helpful thing when you're trying to drift off to sleep. So. Um, in terms of some strategies, I suppose what I say to people is remember that good night's sleep starts when you leave work. OK, so like we said a few minutes ago, you know, in times of high pressure, we, t we tend to forget ourselves and, and forget the basics. So things like giving yourself time to process what's happened during that shift. Um, and one recommendation is to use your, your commute time to do some of that. So perhaps spending half of the time thinking about the things that um, perhaps, you know, you, you need to, to check back over or, or, you know, you can problem solve either at that moment or later on. And also thinking about the things that maybe it's time to let go of and then switching the focus to your life outside of work. So thinking about what you're going to do when you get home, you know, what you're going to have to eat, what, what you might do later on, that kind of thing. Um, another thing that I'm quite keen on and I try to talk to lots of people about is trying some mindfulness based meditation. Um, and, and, you know, that's a that's a skill for life, really, not not just now, but but, you know, later on as well. So learning to sort of quiet in the mind can be a really helpful skill um, in terms of navigating stressful work periods and for falling asleep. Yeah. Um, so, you know, mindfulness based meditation is helping us stay in the here and now rather than getting hooked into thoughts about the future. Um, and, and I sometimes talk about that being the basis of anxiety, the what ifs, the what's yeah. coming next stuff or getting hooked into things that have gone on in the past, mm -hmm. going over and over, that those kind of things. That stuff is gone. We can't go back and change it. Mindfulness is about being present in, in the current moment. 
Um, and there's lots of uh, websites, apps available. I'll just mention a few briefly as a sort of starter. So um, Headspace, I'm aware of at the moment, is offering um, free access to all NHS staff. Mm -hmm. um, there's the Calm app, which is also really good. There is some paid content there, so it depends if it's something that you like, you might want to do that. Um, and Insight Timer is another good app to have a look mm -hmm. at. Um, another couple of things just briefly in terms of sleep is creating a sort of wind down routine. So I would say 30 to 60 minutes before you, you want to um, get to sleep, having a similar routine every night mm -hmm. to get you ready for sleep, so to get the brain and the body um, relaxed and, and prepare for for sleep. So um, there is a there is a sleep program called Sleepio, um, which is come, it's a clinically evidenced um, sleep improvement program. And again, they've given free access for all NHS staff until uh, the end of the year, until the 31st of December. Yeah. So that's useful to know as well. No, thank you for that. I think that's that's plenty of like strategies that you've offered which I think will be really really valued by our viewers and I think even on a personal level for me the mindfulness and meditation is something that I find really really effective oh good people talk about meditation in a certain room in a certain environment in order for that to happen but I think even for me just when you're in the shower when you're alone just getting ready yeah. you can get into a state of meditation a meditative state to just calm the mind and just allow yourself to switch off and just focus on the now without anticipating how your day is going to be so I think it's something that can be incorporated and if and if people want to find out more about it I think we, through these apps and mm -hmm. through contacting the clinical psychology team this will really help them to just sort of um, open their minds and get a bit more understanding about how it works so I think that's excellent and and the fact that there's like free apps we've had the opportunity to circulate some of this information That's around around the hospital yes. so I'm hoping that people will be, be able to utilize these um these forms of coping strategies which which have proven to be quite effective um I just wanted to also move on to this with regards to seeking help um who would you advise staff to seek help from if they felt that they needed to talk to somebody about about what they're going through um, well, obviously, I, I mentioned already that we have the dedicated um, staff helpline at the QE. Um, so, so make contact with our department, the Department of Clinical Health Psychology, um, and, and that helpline is open every day, 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. And you just call extension 3442. So, um, you know, as a service, we we set up that helpline to support all staff. So no matter your profession, your area of work, we, we're pleased to hear from all members of staff. Um, we recognise that the pandemic is having, you know, a, a, an unsettling and negative impact on, on lots of people and um, and on our mental health. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, 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 the pressures that the current pressures that the NHS um, services experiencing are, is that word again, unprecedented. Yeah. Um, and, and we wanted to be able to support our colleagues mm -hmm. because, you know, mental health well-being is essential during this sustained um, sustained pressure. So by all means, contact our service. Mm -hmm. um, we, we can make recommendations about um, perhaps referring on to other services that might be of help. Um, we can suggest some strategies, um, just like we've talked through very briefly, some ideas about sleep there. Um, we can also um, arrange, we, we have, um, some of my colleagues are arranging drop-in sessions um, in different areas of the hospital, where staff are welcome to come and join um, one of my clinical psychologies colleagues face to face, obviously with social distancing in place yeah. um, so that they can talk through. So as a team, we've tried to put in place what we think would be helpful. But of course, we're pleased to hear from from our colleagues what if there's if there are other things that we haven't thought of that would be useful. Um, what we can um, also do is perhaps sign po signpost you onto other services, as I mentioned before. So I am aware that our local wellbeing service um, has given priority access to NHS employees. Mm -hmm. um, they also have a range of online courses um, which can be accessed via the wellbeing website. Mm -hmm. um, and there is also 
the NHS England um, free national wellbeing helpline, um, which is available every day, 7 a.m. till 11 p.m. Let me just check, make sure I give you the right number here. So it's uh, 0300 131 7000. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's alongside other um, apps that are free for NHS staff to use. So I've already mentioned um, Headspace that's based on mindfulness meditation, Sleepio, which is the sleep improvement program. Um, and there's also Daylight, which is a smartphone app for help around worries and anxiety. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And I think what's really yeah. nice is that it's good to know that there are sources of help there that if people if they need it they can reach out and they can get some um have a chat with somebody just to you know just to unwind i think a lot of people find that quite helpful yes and um, so that's that's excellent so thank you for that you. um i wanted to also touch upon first aid psychology training yeah. So this is something that I, alongside a few of my colleagues, we did with um, one of these psychologists, Dr. Burrell. And I just wanted you to just explain to our viewers what, what this means and if they're if they're interested um, and where to seek further information about that. Sure, thank you. I'm glad you got to attend one of yeah. these programmes. That's good. Um, so, yes, another another service that our department can offer is psychological first aid training. Yeah. So um, psychological first aid is about providing practical care and support where it's necessary. Um, it's about helping people to address particular needs and concerns. It might be about helping them to connect with other appropriate services. Um, the, the aim really is to help reduce distress, to prevent people from further harm. Um, it's not necessarily something that everyone affected by COVID-19 will need. Mm -hmm. um, it isn't counselling, it isn't psychological debriefing, um, it isn't sort of pressuring people into to talking about their feelings um, and it's not something that only psychologists can do. So that's why our service is offering training programmes to, to ward managers, to other staff, so that they can support the mental well-being of their teams effectively. Um, so if that sounds like something you might be interested in, um, so the, the psychological first aid training, get in touch with the Department of Clinical Health Psychology. And again, that's on extension 3442. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. And I think we really just shouldn't underestimate the power of raising awareness and just highlighting such a sensitive issue that is mental health. And I think just talking about it, having a chat about it and bringing these issues to light will really help our staff and whoever's actually watching this. And it's also nice to know that because through this awareness and through this initiative, it's been really heartening to see colleagues being quite, you know, proactive and encouraging with regard to, you know, this initiative. So that's always so lovely to see. And I'm so grateful for you taking the time to do this Q&A. And, um, you know, depending on demand, I'm sure that we can do this again in, in a couple of weeks, just to, just to see people's responses and, and how they felt this was. Because I think this is a really excellent, you know, uh, way of allowing staff to co sort of be more aware about what's going on in the hospital, where they can go to seek help, and just being more present and, um, sort of encouraging with regard to mental health and psychological well-being. So thank you so much. Um, if there's anything else you want to say to, to wrap up, please, please go ahead. Really just to say thank you to you, Zara, for, for suggesting this. I think um, I think what's really lovely is that we can, um, you know, do this across a range of platforms. So, yes, we've got the helpline. We've got, you know, a, a physical presence in some of the areas in the hospital. And this is another way us recording you know, this video is another way for us to, to reach staff. So really pleased that you, you, you thought of the idea and that you contacted us to get it going. So thank you. Thank you so much. And for anybody who's watching this, we hope you enjoyed it. And please do get in touch with um, myself or um, Louise with regard to anything, anything else that you guys might be interested in. So thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll, and we'll end it there.